Okay, what's going on everyone? Doc here, and today I want to talk about Black Widow Clairvoyant. So I'll hop right into gameplay in a second. I just want to give a little bit of background on this. Um, Black Widow Clairvoyant has been one of my most wanted champions for a long, long time. For those of you who've been on the channel for a long time, you probably saw my Black Widow Clairvoyant opening where I went for 20 feature GMCs for her, just hoping for the five stars so that I could awaken her and bring her up to rank five. Well, a couple of weeks, or maybe it was like a month ago at this point, last war season end, I popped open a six-star basic, and in it was Black Widow Clairvoyant. She went straight to rank two, and I've been having a ton of fun with her. Specifically, I unlocked Suicides to play around with her with, uh, because they have a big, big benefit for her with not a lot of downsides. So I'm going to show a lot of Act 6 gameplay today. So let's just hop right into it, I guess. Um, I'm going to start off with, uh, I think this is 636 six, is what it is. So, And I've got Colossus here. Colossus is a great fight for her. Anyone who has immunities is a great fight for the for great fight for her, for those of you who don't know. So kind of just basic overview of Black Widow Clairvoyant. Every time an immunity triggers on the opponent, so they're immune to a debuff that I'm trying to place on them, and I try to place three debuffs on my heavy attack, um, then I gain power. If I don't have max clairvoyance charges, which is the little counter there on the left, it's at 20 now, um, max 20. And I also gain a little bit of power. So Black Widow Clairvoyant kind of uses this to deal a lot of damage, and it's where a lot of her utility and survivability comes from. So right there, I went for an SP3, which places the little death touch icon on me at max duration, because the duration also has to do with the clairvoyance charges that I expend, because I expended all of them. So right here, I'm going to go for an SP2 uh, with the Curse of Hellfire. 5,000 extra damage per hit, 8 hits. That's an extra 40,000 damage on top of just the raw damage that it could deal anyways. Tried for a little cheeky SP2 with the um, Curse of Blood up as well for some regeneration. Because the Curse of Blood gives me 35% of the damage dealt back to me as health. That's one of my favorite things about her. Her survivability is second to none. Even though I'm running recoil here. Only running one recoil because why would you ever run more than one? Um, but she gets to kind of regenerate so much. Using a ton of specials with her doesn't... Uh, feel as painful as with so many of my other champions. I pretty much just turned on Suicides after I got Black Widow. Um, I'm planning on doing a couple more videos with them. Specifically, I want to do a how to use Diablo guide that I've been tr I've been wanting to do forever, but I really wanted to get Suicides for it because that kind of maxes out his potential. Uh, another SP2 here is going to almost finish him off. Her SP2 deals a lot of damage, and Suicides really just kind of helps her damage output as well, because she doesn't take that uh, hit to recoil. But champions like Colossus, if you saw my um, Colossus versus Realm Legends Wolverine, um, he took a lot of damage from recoil. Uh, pretty much all of my other champions are taking a lot of damage from this recoil, so eventually I'm going to have to turn it off, but thought I'd have a little bit of fun with Black Widow Clairvoyant at pretty much her maximum potential. So I'm only doing the Poison Suicides. I could turn on uh, Liquid Courage, which is the bleed. Um, but I think it was just, it's just too expensive for me to turn on both just for a little bit of testing when I know I'm not going to run both of them forever. Um, but it, it, was a, it was a lot of fun just to do this and get the extra attack boost from it that really did help out. Definitely wouldn't... I'm, I'm still using them in stuff like um, Alliance War and AQ right now, and that's definitely one thing that I wouldn't do. Um, if I was running the bleed, I would have already turned them off and wouldn't have had this much time to kind of see just how great Black Widow Clairvoyant can be with them. And wow, she she is by far one of my favorite champions in the game. Uh, I'm incredibly happy to have gotten her and gotten so lucky to have her now, especially as a six star, because I know that Black Widow Clairvoyant is probably going to be one of my top champions for a very, very long time. I'm already thinking about doing an Abyss run to try for a Mystic T5 uh, CC for her, to rank her to rank 3. Because I know that I want her at top of my roster for a long, long time. There's nothing that she really can't do. It's more of that she just has a lot of fights where um, the situation isn't the best for her. 
um, but she's more than serviceable for it, mostly in times when the opponent isn't immune. Right here, Vulture is still immune to um, Incinerate, so I get to get, get all the way up to 20 Clairvoyance charges into that massive burst of regeneration right there, because the regeneration while I'm at death touches 70% of the damage done. Uh, in a fight where they don't have any immunity, that's not really as possible, but it still works out perfectly fine. Uh, in fact, she Blackwood or Clairvoyance is now my AQ killer. I run 3-1-1 uh, three, run, three, one, one on map 6, uh, on the days we run map 6 instead of map 7, and she pretty much can go through the whole path because she regenerates so much and that she has that sustainability. On top of already, I showed off her 40,000 extra damage on an SP2. It's absolutely insane. So that was some 6-3-6. Um, six, six. Now I'm into 6-4-6. Six, six, six. So the most end gamey you can get in story mode right now. Um, so this is the tenacity path. And she actually works really well here, even though the first two fights of this don't have immunities. Um, so one great thing about Black Widow Clairvoyant that I haven't touched upon at all is her um, buff, buff immunity debuff that she places on the opponent. So it, it basically takes all their buffs and because they're now immune to them, it gives her clairvoyance charges because she's all about that kind of immunities around those charges. So a little bit of lag right there on the recorder. It seems to be coming back. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, but so essentially, um, it fuels her clairvoyance charges, which she also uses to nullify, um, buffs on her basic attacks, uh, right there. I'm trying to get her to, um, what is it? To overload with her fury buffs. Cause I don't want her to use an SP one when she has all four charges, but now I also have to worry about her regenerating with a lot of Phoenix charges. But what I'm going to do here in a second, my SP two. Um, so even though they have tenacity, her buff immunity works because even it sticks right there, which is really nice because it stopped her regeneration buff from triggering. But you'll see a lot against Heimdall and especially against Gru. Um, even though it only lasts for a second, if that, um, it still gets rid of all the buffs at that instant, um, even if it gets removed by tenacity. So I still get quite a few clairvoyance charges if I pop it at the right time, plus that regeneration. Um, and then I can use those clairvoyance charges that I get to nullify more buffs and fuel Mystic Dispersion. I'm running three of five Mystic Dispersion. I didn't change that at all for her. Uh, I've been running that forever, and it's great. Um, it's just a really good level to kind of run. Um, to not, not so much that you're always passing the power meter you want to be at, um, but not so little that it really has no effect. I, I have four unlocked. I never actually tried out four. I should probably uh, do that at some point just to kind of see how it is. So Heimdall here, he gets quite a lot of buffs. The more buffs, um, he gets a ton more if I'm being aggressive. So right here, I'm going to try and be a little bit aggressive. And even though my buff tenacity didn't last, I'm back up to five clairvoyance charges. That's five more buffs that I can nullify with the basic attacks. And it's just extra power towards my next SP2 and my next um, regeneration as well. Uh, I thought I could counter his heavy. I guess sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. Right there was a really bad time to use my SP2. Sure, it got me the regen, um, but he didn't have any buffs on him. So I definitely could have timed that a little bit better. Um, to get a couple more clairvoyance charges because now I'm out and I'm only at a bar of power. Just a little bit more um, kind of playing around and trying to find her best rotation, especially on something like the buff immunity or, or the um, tenacity path, which is, it, it's a relatively difficult path. At least I have found it kind of difficult in the past, but so far I haven't had too much of an issue with it. Uh, and I'll get through uh, three of the fights here up, up to the Annihilus. I, I, I can never fight Annihilus, whether it's with Black Widow Clairvoyant or anyone else. Um, but yeah, I've just been having a ton of fun with her from AQ to, um, end game content and all that kind of stuff. Um, she has just been phenomenal. And like I said, I'm really, really considering doing an abyss path just so that I can rank three her because she's just that good. She's just that much worth it. I made a big mistake there. Her SP three, you really don't want to use if you don't have a lot of clairvoyance charges because a death touch is not going to last long at all. It lasts based on the, um, its duration increases based on how many charges you have. And also, uh, it gets rid of all your clairvoyance charges. So now I can't nullify any buffs. And he's going to gain a couple seconds and I'm also out of power. 
Uh, meant to do meant to go for that one last SP two, because uh, that probably would have put me up to ninety five percent, and then I would be able to end this fight on a hundred on ninety five. But can't quite do that. Again, the heavy attack. I thought I had the timing down. I guess not. Sorry, SP one. Again, doesn't get the kill, so I lose another 5% to recoil. That's what it kind of feels like to play anyone else with suicides other than Black Widow. You just lose health, lose health, and it just kind of like places a timer on your fight that I don't really like needing. But Black Widow Clairvoyant is so good that she's all right with that. So against Groot here, I do, I do always... Um, one thing I always do because I'm running the Poison Suicides, always start off with either with um, a four hit fourth light attack to switch modes into Poison and get rid of it. I thought I was going to have enough power to go straight into the SP2 there, um, but I guess there was something up a little bit with uh, how much my power gain gave me, because it, it's a little bit delayed, so you kind of got to watch out for that. But Groot is great to be um, immediately getting rid of his buffs. He ha he gets a ton at one time, which if I tie my um, SP2 at the right time, because I place that buff immunity, all of those buffs are just going to go away and absolutely fuel my power meter. Right here, though, I am entirely out of clairvoyance. Or, um, I'm max on clairvoyance charges, so I won't be gaining any more power when I when I would gain any more clairvoyance charges, but I'm allowed to nullify some of those buffs, which uses them up and also gives me power from Mystic Dispersion. So you kind of have both of those options. Groot is great because he has bleed immunity, but I'm not really using that so much. I'm more just kind of gaining the charges from him being immune to, um, from him being buff immune when I replace that. Like right there, it, it it gets it gets removed by tenacity immediately, but it literally does not matter because um, I can just get rid of all of them in a big burst. It's it's great. Um, like I, I've I've already said it like a, ten times in the video. I'm sure I'll say it another a hundred. Black Widow Clairvoyant is quite possibly my favorite favorite champion in the entire game right now. Um, she has just been phenomenal, and she, I'm I'm so lucky that I got her as a um, six star and. Eventually, hopefully, I can dupe her. Uh, you don't see, ne not a none, not in any of the gameplay that I recorded, or that I tried to get, would the dupe ability have really come into play? Um, it just would have. Um, it just would have made it so that when I were to, if I get down to zero health while I have that uh, death death touch up, um, I regenerate instead of dying. Uh, it's nice to have, but it doesn't really come in very handy. Um, so right here against Deadpool. Um, I'm, it's no immunities, and there's also no nodes. Um, this was just the most basic fight. I think he only just had the global, which was an attack boost and something else. This is, um, so that ends the, uh, 6 4 6 path. Now I'm into 6 4 one so still pretty end game here. And wanted to go for an SP2, so it's 2,500, uh, normally, without the, uh, death touch on that Hellfire, like you just saw there. Um, so it's 8 times 2,500 for an extra, you know, just a nice 20,000 extra damage on her SP2, on top of the fact that it can hit, oh, just for another, like, 10,000 on the last hit if it crits. It's insane. The, the fact that she just has this much, um, power, um, in terms of damage, survivability, and immunities, she has everything. <laughs> one of the best champions of the game right now i've i said it again i apologize um but yeah she is just phenomenal i'm kind of here against deadpool i'm just kind of um not really trying to deal with his region i tried a little bit to stop it with the poisons but um didn't really want to just get to nullify his regeneration literally no matter to me um even if i couldn't nullify it then i just would have um used my debuff or my uh, buff immunity on him a second later Kind of dealt with Deadpool really easy here. Her heavy attack hits for a ton as well. I think it can hit. I think it can hit for like 10k, and her SP one just hits for 15,000. So Black Widow Clairvoyant has the second highest attack stat in the game, which is kind of you kind of see that when you see an 11,000 hit heavy there, again right after. So um, it's Doom first, followed by Black Widow Clairvoyant, and then a Wasp. I have all three of them. It's great. Um, so right here, I'm on the gimme path. So what gimme does is um, every time I regenerate, it's going to deal that damage back to the opponent um, times some multiplier. I think it might be times two, but I'm not 100% on that. Um, so it's also regenerating from willpower, which is why you see him taking a ton of da or see him, see him taking that 7, uh, 12 per second or per tick. Um, 
This node path in um, 6, 641 as well also has the defender immune to all damage over time debuffs. Yet another thing that Black Widow Clairvoyant loves. So this is probably one of the best paths possible for her. Um, so I just stopped at Superior Iron Man's regeneration uh, with the buff immunity, which is great. And right here, he's going to go down in just a second through some just raw damage. Uh, it's just phenomenal. And Gimme is great for her. Um, follow that up with Rhino this time. Um, same same path, same nodes, all of that. An 8,000 heavy attack? Is that what that said? That was a lot. Okay. Um yeah, she really does deal a ton of damage, not only just with her um, just with her abilities. Rhino here is going to be a little bit difficult, and I am going to get smacked in a couple seconds. Right there. Um, and his uh, unstoppable and unblockable did it again. Um, so I'm going to try and hopefully regenerate um, quite a bit while dealing a lot of damage to him. Um, saw right there, got back up quite a bit. The power sting is going to be a little bit of a pain here. You see, I saw the first one tick off. Second one should tick off in a second here. Great. Now I can actually go in and use an SP um, too. Can't use that when the power sting's up. It will deal survivable damage, but it'll be kind of painful, and I do make that mistake a little bit later. This Rhino also has 200% power gain, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's also helping me kind of rotate in and out of his specials without having to worry too much about trying to block his unblockable, which is really, really good. Um, get, I think he might, he might get me one more time here in a second, or maybe I just I lose to the, uh, power gain, but, yeah, Black Widow Clairvoyant dealt really well with this path, um, I did mess up against the next fight in this path, which was the, um, classic Ultron, because of his evade was just an absolute pain, right, right there, I, I messed up, um, I launched a special when the power sting was still up, that was my fault, I'm uh, gonna go for a heavy in response to his there, and then, SP2 from him, hopefully in a second. There we go. I also didn't get rid of the poison here, which was definitely a mistake, because that's hurting my regeneration. Um, so I definitely should have gotten rid of that. Um, one thing about Black Widow and with all my champions, I'm, I have about a net even in, in terms of the actual damage Suicide is dealing to me, um, which is pretty good with running max willpower and some other stuff. Last two fights here. This is just for a little bit of fun. Icarus. Um, so this is the early Act 6 um, Icarus, and I've got the Medusa, and I've got the next fight. So I thought I would kind of test her regeneration based on damage, and you saw it right there. So Icarus, I gain, gain a ton of Furies, and because of all those Furies, that 35%, it just increases a ton. Uh, and the Massacre here is going to be the last fight. I pretty much played this relatively passive. I don't know what caused that parry to fail. I still don't know what caused that parry to fail. Um, but I guess it failed and I took a little bit of hits. But that's all right. Once I get up to an SP3 here in a second, I will murder him and do 54,000 on the last hit of the SP2. Um, along with all the regeneration that I get. And I didn't even need that the regeneration from that 54,000. That would have been like 35% um, uh, of 54,000 is what, like... I want to say it's like 15,000, something around that. I'm not 100% sure, but it would have been an absolute ton. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Um, Black Widow Clairvoyant has been my absolute favorite. I can't wait to really go into Act 7 with her once that eventually comes out. Um, and hopefully do a lot of variant stuff with her as well. Because I still haven't done the current variants. Like um, 1, 2, and 3, those are a bit of a pain as well. So hopefully she'll help me out there. Um, and then an upcoming variant as well. So that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on Black Widow Clairvoyant down in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one.